Hello. It's a pleasure for me to be here again, and I want to thank you for being here as well. As you know, this MOOC is called Social Entrepreneurship, a Grassroots Revolution. What I'd like to talk about today is part two of some thoughts about life and social entrepreneurship. The outline for today is, I'm picking up with where I left off last time, so we'll start by talking about number six, importance of balance and harmony in life. Number seven, positive energy in us and society. Eight, the difficulties of social entrepreneurship. Nine, business entrepreneurs compared to social entrepreneurs. Number 10, volunteers compared to social entrepreneurs. And the last item is, is social entrepreneurship new? But first, I'd like to touch base with the MOOC website. I want to make sure everyone re re knows that we have the website available and uh, all information pertaining to upcoming courses and this course may be found there. Also, we have a Facebook page. Uh, all you need to do is search for Social Entrepreneurship Program. And I'd also like to mention the optional book. This is not required and uh, it is not necessary to have this book, but some people enjoy having a written uh, study source. So, let's take a look at number six, the importance of balance and harmony in life. I want to mention balance because this is an important idea in some countries. It is an issue that we talk about here in the United States, but it's my understanding that in some other countries it's even more important. Balance relates to social entre entrepreneurship, it seems to me. It is my perception that the most meaningful and satisfactory lives involve balance and harmony. Humans have an inclination to be selfish and taking. I believe we also have an inclination to be giving. The idea of a balanced life partly involves bringing these types of pursuits into harmony. Seek to meet our needs, but also give of ourselves as we seek to help others meet their needs. I have found that professional and economic success means little unless other parts of my life are in harmony. My guess is that many other people who are viewing this MOOC have had similar experiences. It's very interesting how important balance is in life. I encourage you to follow whatever path you define as important. I also invite you to consider some points from this course to be related to balance in life. It is possible that what I offer can help bring greater balance to your life. I encourage all of us to take a look at our lives and to analyze how much of our life is taking and how much of our life is giving. Uh, to what extent do our lives reflect balance? We are all takers and to a certain extent taking is an aspect of a healthy life. In my life, I have found many situations in which I have taken to bring me only short-term satisfaction. But I've found in my life that the type of giving that I have when I'm engaged in social entrepreneurship projects brings me deep meaning. And it's ironic that sometimes as we are giving that we are actually receiving a great deal. Uh, this seems to me to be a part of what is involved with social entrepreneurship. The next issue I'd like to take a look at is positive energy in us and society. Here's another issue important in some other countries, uh, perhaps even more important than the United States. Human society does not exist apart from people. People make whatever your and my society are. 
Humans bring energy to their society. Some human energy is positive and beneficial, and other energy is not. Social entrepreneurship brings positive energy to us as individuals and to our society. All societies have some positives and some negatives. Social entrepreneurs with pure hearts bring something special to societies, and this is what is the basis of the type of peaceful revolution that I'm trying to encourage in this course. The next issue is the difficulties within social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurship is the use of innovation to start new projects or to improve existing projects to help people in need. Each of these steps can be difficult. Coming up with a new idea is the first step. Implementing that idea to form a working project is a second step. There is difficulty in both steps. I believe the key is to, st to start small and work at the grassroots. I believe that we don't need to go to another nation to find our place to do our social entrepreneurship work. Wherever we are is a good place for our work. The next issue is a business entrepreneur compared to a social entrepreneur. A business entrepreneur's primary purpose is to make money. A social entrepreneur's primary purpose is to assist people in need. Although a business entrepreneur may contribute to assisting people in need, the primary purpose is always financial profit. Although a social entrepreneur will probably need some money to be able to operate, the primary purpose is always to help people in need. I would like to encourage business entrepreneurs and anyone in business to think more about engaging in some social entrepreneurship activities. Uh, the business entrepreneur could create a product of value to people in need or donate money to a social entrepreneurship project or donate some of their products uh, for example, if they're making shoes or bottled water, uh, those can be useful to people in need. I would also like to encourage social entrepreneurs to think a little bit more about making money. Most social entrepreneurs in the United States depend primarily on donations from individuals and corporations and on grants from funding sources. But I would like to encourage social entrepreneurs to think more about, well, to think a little bit more in a business entrepreneurial manner. The point being, not depend so much on donations or grants, but ask yourselves, is there something we can sell? I think it's very important for the strength of a social entrepreneurship project to be funded not just by donations and grants, but to try to find something to sell and to receive funding in that manner as well. The next issue is nonprofit and for-profit opportunities. And this relates to what I was just talking about a little bit. Many for-profit companies around the world find ways to help people in need, either by the products they produce or other ways. Businesses with a social conscience often devote a portion of their profits to helping others. Although much opportunity to help others exists within the for-profit business situation, most projects to help others are found within nonprofit organizations. As I discuss issues in this course, my main focus will be on nonprofit efforts to help people in need. And here are three labels that are sometimes used. NPO would stand for nonprofit organization. NGO, this is fairly well known, non government organization. And then in the United States, a label that is well known is 501C3. This is a classification 
in the U.S. tax code for a type of nonprofit. So these are the types of organizations that, and the type of nonprofit effort uh, on which I will be focusing in this class. It's interesting it's, that it's my perception that most of the best innovative social entrepreneurship ideas that emerge are not from professional social entrepreneurs, but they're, they're from everyday people who are just living life. And they have an idea, they decide they want to commit at least a part of their life to this idea that's going to help other people in need. And then they eventually move, transition into one of these types of nonprofit organizations. The next issue is volunteers compared to social entrepreneurs. Volunteers are often very important to social entrepreneurship initiatives, but volunteers are not the same as social entrepreneurs. Social entrepreneurship is usually much more substantial than volunteering. Volunteering can be as simple as picking up cans along the side of the road, but social entrepreneurship always involves more than this. Volunteers usually perform tasks that have been done by others many times, but social entrepreneurship always involves some innovation. Volunteers always work for free, but this is not usually a characteristic of social entrepreneurship. This is an issue of great importance to me because a lot of people seem to misunderstand something that's involved in nonprofit organizations. Because the word nonprofit is used, many people seem to assume that anybody who's working with a nonprofit receives no pay, they receive no salary. This is very untrue. The, the, the idea of nonprofit means that there are not shareholders in a corporation and that the profits, that the money that comes into the organization, the point of a nonprofit is that that money goes back into serving clients rather than going to shareholders as occurs in for-profit corporations. The point here is that we can start a nonprofit and receive a salary. Uh, another option is we can go to work for an existing nonprofit and receive a salary. What's very important for us to recognize is that good salaries can come to good social entrepreneurs. So the three main differences between volunteers and social entrepreneurs that I just covered Number one is that social entrepreneurs start or improve programs, but volunteers usually do not. Number two, social entrepreneurs always innovate, but volunteers usually do not. And three, social entrepreneurs are usually paid, but volunteers are never paid. So a good question that I would like to raise is, is social entrepreneurship new? My short answer is no. If we define social entrepreneurship the way I have, social entrepreneurship has been around for hundreds of years. For hundreds of years, innovative projects have been started to help categories of people in need. For example, in North America, some Indian tribes hundreds of years ago had warrior associations of men that performed good deeds for people in the tribe when their warriors were not fighting. And in the more technologically advanced nations of the world in the 1600s and 1700s, organized assistance to some categories of people existed. So the point is that social entrepreneurship as an activity has been around for a long time. And so is there anything new in this? Uh, I'm, going to provide the answer, yes, there is. So what is it? Well, for starters, the label social entrepreneurship is new, but this would not justify the existence of this course. So what else is new? What is new is the creation of new information and bringing together of the bringing together of some other information in a new way. 
What is new is the empowerment of individuals around the world through access to information. What is new is the empowerment of individuals around the world through connective technology. What is new is a growing middle class in our world. People who have time to do more than simply survive. So we have several factors that are new. First of all, there's some new information and information is growing at a rapid rate, as you know. Second, existing information is being organized in new ways that provides new ideas and new opportunities. Third, I'm just repeating the points that I just covered. Third, there's individual empowerment as a result of more and more people having access to vast amounts of information through the internet. Four, there's individual empowerment because people are connected through uh, technology, uh, cell phones, Facebook, email, Skype, and so forth. That's powerful. A fifth very powerful factor is the growing middle class. More and more people have enough money to to relax a little bit, to spend money and spend time on, in areas other than simply survival. So as a result of a, a growing middle class across the world, more and more people, millions more people, have the opportunity to think more about other people in need and also have the opportunity to do something to help other people in need. So I see our time changing something very significant is happening. What is new is a social movement, a peaceful revolution to help people in need that is sweeping our world. Do you feel revolutionary today? I do. I feel revolutionary every day. Thank you for taking your valuable time to listen to some of the words that I've had to say today. Have a good day.